Hello everyone. Another video to show you guys how to make real consistent return in the stock market, even during the market crashes. The key point to take away from this video is that your best returns are realized when you hold on to your stocks during the ups and downs of market volatility. And the key is to hold them long term. So let's hear from the best of the best investors, beginning with Charlie Munger, the American self-made billionaire and the right-hand man of Warren Buffett. In fact, you can argue that if you're not willing to react with equanimity to a market price decline of 50% two or three times a century, you're not fit to be a common shareholder and you deserve the mediocre result you're going to get. I am continuously invested in American equity, but I've had my Berkshire stock declined by 50% three times. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it doesn't bother me that much. I regard that as just a natural consequence of adult life properly lived. So if you have my attitude, it doesn't really matter. How worried are you by the declines in the share price of Berkshire Hathaway, the difficulties the companies in? No? This is the third time that Warren and I have seen our holdings in Berkshire go down top tick to bottom tick by 50%. I think it's in the nature of long-term shareholding with the normal vicissitudes in, in worldly outcomes and in markets that, that the long-term holder has his quoted value of his stock go down and then by, say, 50%. Second up is Peter Lynch the famed portfolio manager of Fidelity Magellan Fund between 1977 to 1990. It would be wise to listen to him since he averaged more than 29% return during those years and made him an investment icon. But if you didn't understand the company, if you're just buying on the fact the stock had gone from 26 to 16 and then it got to 10, what would you do when it went to 9? What would you do when it went to 8? What would you do when it went to 7? This is the problem that people have is they sell stocks because they didn't know why they bought it, then it went down, and they don't know what to do now. Do you flip a coin? Do you walk around the block? You know, <laughs> what do you do? You should study history, and history is the important thing you learn from. What you learn from history is the market goes down. It goes down a lot. The math is simple. There's been 93 years a century. This is easy to do. The market's had 50 declines of 10% or more. So 50 declines in 93 years about once every two years, the market falls 10%. We call that a correction. That means, that's a euphemism for losing a lot of money rapidly. But we, you know, we call it a correction. And uh, uh, so 50 declines in 93 years, about once every two years, the market falls 10%. Of those 50 declines, 15 have been 25% or more. That's known as a bear market. We've had 15 declines in 93 years. So every six years, the market's going to have a 25% decline. That's all you need to know. You need to know the market's going to go down sometime. If you're not ready for that, you shouldn't own stocks. And it's good when it happens. If you like a stock at 14 and it goes to 6, that's great. You understand the company, you look at the balance sheet, and they're doing fine. And you're hoping to get to 22 with it. 14 to 22 is terrific. 6 to 22 is exceptional. So you take advantage of these declines. They're going to happen. No one knows when they're going to happen. It would be very, people tell you about it after the fact that they predicted it, but they predicted it 53 times. And uh, so you can take advantage of the volatility in the market if you understand what you own. Because a lot of times people buy on the basis, the stock has gone down this much, how, you know, how much further can it go down? I remember when Polaroid went from 130 to 100, people said, here's this great company, great record. If it ever gets below 100, you know, just buy every share, you know, and it did get below 100. A lot of people bought on that basis saying, look, it's gone from 135 to 100. It's not 95. What a buy. Within a year, it was 18. And this is a company with no debt. I mean, this is a company that was just so overpriced, it went down. Uh, I did the same thing in my, uh, I think my first or second year of Fidelity. Kaiser Industries had gone from $26 a share to 16. I said, how much lower can it go? It's 16. So I think we bought one of the biggest blocks ever on the, New York, on the American Stock Exchange of Kaiser Industries at 14. I said, you know, it's gone from 26 to 16. How much lower can it go? Well, at 10, I called my mother and said, Mom, you got to uh, look at this Kaiser Industries. I mean, how much lower can it go? It's gone from 26 to 10. 
Well, it went to six, it went to five, it went to four, it went to three. And uh, now I under fortunate this happened rapidly, or I would probably be still caddying or uh, be a bit of working at the stop and shop, but I, it happened fast, so I was able to, this, this was compressed. It, uh, and at three, I figured out, you know, there's something very wrong here because Kaiser Industries owns 40% of Kaiser Steel, they own 40% of Kaiser Aluminum, they own 32% of Kaiser Cement, they own Kaiser Broadcasting, they own Kaiser Santa Gravel, Kaiser Engineers, they own Jeep, they own business after business, and they had no debt. Now, I learned this very early. This might be a breakthrough for some people. It's very hard to go bankrupt if you don't have any debt. It's, it's tricky. Some people can approach that. It's a, real, it's a real achievement. But they had no debt, and the whole company at three was selling at about $75 million. At that point, it was equal to buying one Boeing 747. I said, there's something wrong with this company selling for $75 million. I was a little premature at 16, but uh, I said, everything's fine, and eventually this will work out. And they, what they did is they gave away all their shares to their shareholders. They, they passed out shares in Kaiser's Mint. They passed out shares in Kaiser Lunum. They passed out their public shares in Kaiser Steel. They sold all the other businesses, and you get about $50 a share. Last, we have Ray Dalio, the American billionaire who made his fortune with his hedge fund Bridgewater Associates, which manages over $150 billion. In fact, Bridgewater Associates even had positive returns during the 2008 crisis. He is considered to be one of the more innovative investors of the financial markets. The game. Um, it has to be the opposite of what your instincts in the crowd says, because the market reflects the crowd. So you want to buy when no one wants to buy, and you want to sell when no one wants to sell, right? right. So, and that's emotionally difficult, um, and probably you're not going to play that game well because it takes a lot of resources to play the good. I'm, we spend hundreds of millions of dollars each year to try to play that game well, and it's a tough game to play well. Mm -hmm. So I would caution you about the market timing game, but I would say that if you're gonna do it, do it in the ways that are uncomfortable because they're opposite your instincts. So in conclusion, the best way to make money, and I mean consistent profits, is number one, to buy companies that you understand well. Or better yet, buy an ETF that tracks an index. Unless you have the analytical skills of these investors, I think for most of us, it's better to stay with an index that covers many stocks. And number two is to buy when the market is falling. I don't like market crashes, but I think that is when you make the most money and get rich. And number three, is to have a long-term horizon of five to 10 years. If you get a chance to buy it during a market crash, your risk is actually less if you're able to hold it long-term. Because as history shows, the markets will swing both on the upside and the downside to a stream. You just have to sit tight and wait for the upswing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and please smash the like button, comment, and subscribe to support my channel. Until next time, happy investing.